So let's do some examples of actually using the kinematics equations to solve problems. The Boeing 787 Dreamliner is a large modern passenger jet. In order to take off, it must accelerate from rest to take off speed while traveling down the runway. It can accomplish this in a distance of 2800 meters and a time of 35 seconds. What is its final speed or its takeoff speed? The first thing you should do when you're solving kinematics equations is decide which direction you want to be positive. So in this case we have a jet traveling down the runway. Let's just say that we want the direction of the runway to be positive. It's always good to make a note of that in your solution. Our next step is going to be parsing through the problem and recording any variables that we need. So basically we'll write down all the information we're given and the information we're asked to find and then we're going to choose an equation that works. So we're going to do this one step at a time, literally parsing through. So we've got the Boeing 787. In order to take off, it must accelerate. So we've got acceleration going on from rest. So that's the first definite piece of information we have. And that is that our initial velocity is 0. While traveling down the runway, it can accomplish this in a distance of 2,800 meters. So our distance is 2800 meters at a time of 35 seconds and then we are asked to find its final velocity or final speed and so that's the the unknown and so hopefully after you've done this you see that we have four of the five variables that are involved in this question and so now we need to choose an equation that involves these four variables and it cannot have any variables that are not included here. So hopefully you recognize this equation as being the one that includes those four variables. And this is the point at which our physics problem turns into a math problem. Now all we have to do is plug our numbers into the equation, rearrange it, and come up with a solution. Some people prefer to rearrange before they put the numbers in. But I generally like to put the numbers in first because sometimes you can simplify with numbers, especially if you have zeros. So the distance is 2,800 meters. Let's always keep our units with it also. The final velocity is what we don't know, so we're going to leave that as a variable. The initial velocity is zero. That gets divided by two, and the time is 35 seconds. So right away that zero term becomes meaningless. And then I'm going to divide both sides by 35 seconds and multiply both sides by 2. So 2800 divided by 35 and then times by 2 is equal to 160. So 160 meters per second becomes our final velocity. And we could verify that my meters here we're divided by my seconds here, so our units are correct. They're indeed a unit for velocity. At this point, we also need to check the significant digits. Our time had only two significant digits. Uh, notice that the initial velocity of zero, that's not a measurement, right? So that is not a limiting factor for our significant digits. So time remains our smallest one, so we should really change this to 1.60 times 10 squared meters per second. So we can say that the final speed is 1.60 times 10 squared meters per second. Let's try another one. A kayaker on the Old Man Reservoir accelerated from rest to cruising speed over a distance of 20 meters. If the rate of acceleration was 0.049 meters per second squared, what was the cruising speed? Again, in this case, our direction is going to be as simple as saying let forward be positive because there's really only one direction involved, so it makes sense for that to be positive. Let's again parse through our question. We've got a distance of 20 meters happening. So distance is equal to 20 meters. The rate of acceleration was 0 0.049. So acceleration is 0 0.049 meters per second squared we are asked for the cruising speed. So that would be the final velocity. We're wondering what the final velocity is. We're also assuming that this happened from rest. So the initial velocity is zero. Again, we're looking for a kinematics equation that involves these four variables. So this time we need acceleration to be in there. We do not need time. 
So you should recognize this as being the formula that we need. And now again, we're going to put our numbers in and just do the math. So final velocity, we don't know. That's what we're setting out to figure out. Initial velocity is zero. So that's nice. That term is gone. Two times the acceleration, which is 0 0.049 meters per second squared, times the distance, which is 20 meters. So if we do the math, we've got 2 times 0 0.049 times 20 which is 1.96. Have a look at our units. We had meters per second squared, and we times that by meters. So we end up with meters times meters, which is meters squared per second squared. All of this is equal to the final velocity squared. So our next step should be to square root both sides of this so that we get just the final velocity because we don't want it to be squared. So the square root of that answer should equal 1.4. Notice also our units. We've square rooted meters squared per second squared, so that turns into just meters per second. In this case, two significant digits should be good, so we can say that the cruising speed was 1.4 meters per second. Okay, let's do one more example. A cyclist skidded to a halt in 3.1 seconds. If the skid mark was measured to be 2.2 meters long, what was the rate of acceleration? Again, let's choose a direction, and I think it makes sense to have the cyclist going in the positive direction. Our question gives us information about time of 3.1 seconds. We have a uh, distance of 2.2 meters. Of course, this is the, the distance during which this cyclist was decelerating. And we are asked for the rate of acceleration. Now, so far, that's only three variables. And we don't have an equation with those three variables. So parse the question carefully. And it says that the cyclist skidded to a halt. So the final velocity has to be 0. Again, look for an equation with these four variables in it. And I see this one as the one that's going to work. So distance is 2.2 meters. Final velocity is zero, so this whole term cancels out. We've got negative one-half acceleration is what we're looking for, and the time is 3.1 seconds, and that has to be squared. So if we start by squaring 3.1, then we get 9.61, so 2.2 meters equals negative one-half acceleration times 9.61. I can now divide both sides by 9.61 and also multiply by 2 to get rid of that 1 half. So I'll be doing 2.2 divided by my answer there. By the way, it's always a good habit to use the answers from your calculator if possible, because especially if they're longer and you've been rounding, you don't want to introduce any rounding errors. Anyway, then I need to multiply by 2 to get rid of that 1 half. And now I have 0 0.458 equals negative acceleration, actually. That negative was still there. Well, if we get rid of the negative, it ends up being negative 0 0.458 is equal to the acceleration. And now we see the significance of choosing a direction. We let forward be positive and there was negative acceleration. So that's what tells us that the cyclist was slowing down, which makes sense. We should be rounding this to two significant digits, so let's make that negative 0 0.46 meters per second squared. So I've actually kind of skipped over my units here, but I uh, squared the seconds, so we should have had our units within there as well. So now let's translate this into our sentence, the rate of acceleration was 0 0.46 meters per second squared backwards. So let's, we take our negative symbol and turn it into the real meaning, which means that it was a uh, negative acceleration, means it was backwards, or in other words, slowing down. So if you follow the basic problem solving technique that I've shown you here, then kinematics equations should not be too intimidating.